All right, we're back, all you snowboarders of the internet, and we're doing the fourth and final live stream of the day. What we've got up to win is a 152 Kemper Apex Kurt Heine Pro model, volume shifted, carving cruiser, pow board. This, this thing is just a fucking blast to win. In order to win, got a couple rules you got to follow here. So one, you can only ask snowboard gear questions or snowboarding related questions, nothing that pertains to me, my emotional feelings or why don't I do this? No, no, fuck that. I don't give a shit about that. All right. Two, there's no cap on the amount of questions you can ask. No spamming. Be polite. Be patient. Don't be a dick. Seriously, shouldn't have to tell that to you guys. Now, how do you claim your prizes? If you win, you have to take a screenshot of your question on the screen as well as proof that it is your account. So you have to screenshot the account. Email it to info at angry snowboarder. In the subject heading, you will put live stream number four and the prize that you win. Then you will put your mailing address. Please, I cannot stress this enough. I need your fucking mailing addresses. Seriously, it's not that hard of a concept. You can't really ship something without a mailing address. So hopefully you guys get that. Also, Slim Whitman is not allowed to enter the contest. He'll probably send me some angry text messages. Whatever. I don't give a shit. All right. So we got about 36 prizes for the prize pack. We tweaked a few things on the wheel as well. So there's a couple chances to win on there. Some stuff you've probably already seen. Basically, we've given away three snowboards and a set of bindings already today, plus countless other prizes. So we'll definitely want to dive into this. All right. Um, hopefully everyone's been stoked on what we've got going on here. But yeah, so we're going to do this stream for about an hour and 15 minutes that I'm getting the fuck out of here. I need to eat some food. My blood sugar's low. I'm getting cranky. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, get those questions into the comment section or into the chat box, and let's just go from there. If you're on desktop, it's on the right or the left. If you're on mobile, it's usually down below. So let's do that. I see that we got some stuff firing off here. Also, shout out to my man, Carlos Enriquez, for donating so that we could get some of the prizes for here, as well as to my man, Petey Lowell, my Yes Now, and Jones Rep for getting us those Now IPOs that we gave away in the last live stream. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Okay, Philip Chevrier, camper versus rocker for board slides. Seems like hugging a feature is a better idea for stability. Am I missing something? No, camber will always grip better when you're board sliding. It locks in. It just grabs right around the feature and slides with it. Reverse camber, you're basically fighting the whole thing. Rocker is flat to rocker, so, I mean, it'll hug a little bit in there, but Good old-fashioned traditional camber or anything that's got camber between the feet will lock in better on a board slide. Let's give you a spin. All right, prize. Let's see what we got here. I think it's an old memory card for a PlayStation 1. That's what you're winning. I hope you enjoy it. So, yeah. Okay. Scroll down here. Got a bunch of questions. Bull owner, how well or poor was the first generation of 3BT? I owned one of the very first 3BT boards in the United States. It was very unique to ride in that regard, but it was way more defined in the flat section than uh, the current generations where you would notice if you skidded a turn that it would kind of grip and feel a little bit laggy in there. You'd almost feel like it was hooking up, if you will, or like you hit a nail on a box or something and it was just pulling out. All right, let's give you a spin of the wheel. Ooh, loser. So close, so close. All right, we got a super chat from Jackie Greenhog. What's your opinion on the new Ride A10 bindings? I really need to ride them is kind of my opinion on them. I love that Ride has overhauled their binding line. They're doing a lot of interesting stuff over there. It's a really big binding year for them. And I would have ridden them if we hadn't had the Rona, but we all got the Rona so and got put into timeout, so I didn't get to ride them. I will be riding them in the fall, and I am looking forward to riding them in the fall. Ooh, spin again. 
Jackie, you just won a small sticker pack. Yeah. Okay, where were we? Uh. Okay, Andrew Perry, does weight does weight really matter in regards to having a lighter snowboard setup? No, that was a whole marketing spiel for a couple years where everyone was like, oh, we got to fucking make the lightest snowboards on earth. We're going to mill our cores paper thin, and then when you sneeze, they're going to fold and crumple. No, that was straight fucking utter bullshit. Like this whole, well, we got to do it. I mean, most snowboards relatively weigh about the same, which is 5.5 pounds, like roughly. I mean, obviously you go to a smaller size or a bigger size, it's going to weigh a little bit more, but you're, you're talking about – Anything in the mid 150s to about a 160, so like 150 to 160, depending on the brand, but it's about five pounds is what they weigh. That's it. Unless you got really weak ass legs and need to go to the fucking gym, you're not even going to notice it strapped there. Bindings, you notice binding weight more than you do board weight than anything. And if you have a heavy binding on a heavy board, then yeah, of course you're going to fucking notice it. But this whole like, we got to make the most ultra fucking. Super crazy light board is bullshit. It's utter fucking bullshit. All right, Andrew, let's give you a spin of the wheel. Oh, middle finger. Sorry, bud. <sighs> okay. Dre, who I finally fucking made it. Spin the fuck up. Out of me. I, well, I can't spin you, but I can spin the wheel. Uh, I'm torn between the IPP Honolulu and the Captain Mercury. I ride aggressive. East Coast Ice. Also thinking about the Super DOA. You don't need the Super DOA. Well, maybe you do. If you're riding aggressive, you might like that. It'll be more aggressive than the Mercury. Uh, Honolulu is just aggressive in the camber profile. I mean, realistically, if we're talking flex, it would go stiffest to softest. It would go Super DOA, Honolulu, Mercury. In that, but the Mercury and the Honolulu would be really close in flex. Now, in terms of aggressiveness on edge, it's really going to be the DOA. If you're really looking to push it in hard charge, the Super DOA will beat all three of those. If you're kind of looking for something in the middle where it's good in the park, it's still got camber and going to have snap and everything, then you want to go with the Honolulu. If you're just looking for like something that's an easy ride that can handle it all, then that's definitely the Mercury. All right, Dre, this is for you. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Digging into the prize packs. Um, yep. It's pig's feet. You just won some pig's feet. Good for you. Where did I put that? Right there. All right, you just won a prize. Okay, let's see what's going on. Trying to find someone that hasn't had a question. Uh, let's see. Tommy J, now IPO 2021 versus Ride Revolt 2021 for the Twin Pig. Uh, it comes down to two big questions you have to ask yourself, Tommy. Do you want Now's skate tech or do you want a metal base plate like the Revolt has? Um, you know, it, it, it's going to, or a standard base plate, I should say, like a non one. With skate tech, you're going to get more play in there from toe to heel and it's going to change the power precision and drive down from the toe and heel edge versus being a flat mounted binding and how that actually works. 
Now, personally, I think that the ride is going to match better with the Twin Pig. Obviously, ride makes their bindings to work with their product. But the now bindings, it's a little bit different of a ride. They have a little bit different feel to them. It's not for everyone. So you really have to ask yourself, do you want to go with that or not? That's really it. I leave that up to your choice. But two solid bindings in that category, and I think that'll work for you. Tommy, let's give you a spin. Oh, middle finger. All right. So just so everyone knows, Kemper Snowboards, who did donate this prize, are in the chat right now. You can talk to the owner of the company, Jim Hunt. Great guy. He'll answer your questions if you got any for Kemper Snowboard. So definitely check that out. Okay. All right. Let's see. Beeswags, how do types of side cuts change the ride feel of a board? Are certain types of side cuts better for certain styles of riding, bi-radial, quadratic, etc.? Uh, basically, you're just talking about, like, is it a bi-radial, is two radius, quadratic, is a four radius side cut. It's just the multi-radius in there if you blend them together and whatnot. Realistically, so many people get fucking hung up on this shit, and it's like, does it ride well? Yes. Does it not ride well? No. The bigger thing is to look where the radiuses end on the side cut compared to the camber profile and what's going on with the flex pattern. You want to match the radius of the side cut to the camber profile as well as the flex pattern. It doesn't make sense to me when you've got something like Never Summer's RC Tech and you put the contact point right in the Vario inside the camber zone. So you've essentially lost the load point. So it's inside. So it makes it more hooky. This is one of those things that you start to notice the more you ride something. If you pay attention to it, it will be hooky. It will be that. It's like a dual degressive side cut versus a dual progressive side cut. They're going to ride a little bit different, but the bigger thing is flex and camber of the board. I've talked about this a bunch today in these live streams. I think people just get so fucking hung up on this shit and it really doesn't fucking matter. Like average rider, it's not going to fucking matter. It's not like you're racing. It's not like you're doing anything like that. I mean, you know, some will grip a little bit better than others just based on if it's like a tri radial, bi radial, quad radical. You know, there's so much different shit if it's got added contact points and traction bumps. But by and large, it's just, it's just shit people get fucking hung up on that they don't really need to. All right. Let's give you a spin of the wheel. Whew. That middle finger's coming up hot again. <sighs> okay, Cyborg Santa. Whoa, that's Cyborg Santa too. Cyborg Santa, the original. Hey, what are your thoughts on the DPS Phantom treatment for snowboards? I, it intrigues me. But you got to understand that it's like putting an epoxy on the bottom of your board. Like you have to cure it and all this stuff. If you get a core shot that's and you get it fixed, that's a spot that doesn't have it on there. I like the concept of it. I think that there is a way to really make that work in there. I have some stuff called snow coat. I'm going to do a whole video like applying it to a snowboard. I meant to get it done this spring and actually go test it in some variable conditions and whatnot. And I just wasn't able to. So I'm going to do a video on that and then hopefully get it on snow in the fall and check that out. But I like the way that they're thinking about this and it, it does make some sense to me. And when you start to talk to the chemical engineers that put it together and how they came up with it and you really, you get the idea of what they're trying to go for with it. It's, it's kind of like when you ceramic coat your card for protection and stuff, it, it makes sense in that regard. So, uh, all right. So Santa, spin of the wheel. Ooh, reverse spin going the other way. All right, you got a prize. Let's see what we got here. It's big and round and kind of heavy. I think it's a soup can. So 
So there we go. You want a soup can? Maybe. I don't know. Put that down in the rest of them. Okay, let's see. Trying to find someone else that hasn't asked a question. Ooh, good one. One cold frog. If, a, if you run a skier into a tree and keep going, did the skier make a noise? If you can't hear it, it didn't happen. And if they died and you didn't see it, they didn't really die. It's all good. Remember, spray skiers at all times, people. <laughs> Ooh, medium sticker pack. Medium sticker pack. All right. Okay. Yeah, give away a lot of freaking things. Okay. Downtown Bree, what board do you recommend best for Arapahoe Basin this winter? We're road tripping out there. LibTech Orca or Jones? Yeah, buddy, you rock. Keep up the angry angst. Punk's not dead. Okay, so personally... It depends on what time of the year you come out to a basin. I love riding a basin. I ride a basin about a hundred days a year this year. I did not ride a basin a hundred days. That really pisses me off, but okay. So here's the thing. If it's like preseason to early start of the regular season, you probably want to go with that orca. You're just going to deal with something. You're going to be dealing with more rock hopping. You're probably going to be riding more of the lower angle pow shit like that. Now, if it's peak season, fucking pow dumping, grab yourself a Jones, grab a fucking mind expander, and rip it. That thing is going to crush it. And if it's like a foot or more, a Jones storm chaser would definitely work. Now, if you're like coming in later in the spring where it can be variable, where you can have an awesome blower pow morning and then it turns to hot pow by midday, you're going to fucking want to go with something more like a flagship, maybe a hovercraft in that type of scenario. So hopefully that answers your question on that. Dude, enjoy coming out here. A Basin is a fucking gem. I love that place. Uh, super fun. Ooh, small sticker pack for you there, bud. So, yeah. Okay. And so since a lot of you have tuned in, since I already said, went through the start of this live stream with the rules and stuff. I'm going to go over how you win your prizes when you do it. So basically to get a chance of the wheel, all you got to do is ask a question. I pick it. You get a spin of the wheel. If you win a prize, there's some stuff you got to do. There's some steps. So you need to take a screenshot of your question in the chat. You also need to take a screenshot proving that your account is linked to you. You're going to email it to info at angry snowboarder.com, right? Info at angry snowboarder.com. In the subject heading, you're going to put live stream number four prize and whatever I say the prize is. And then you're going to also include in the body of the email your mailing address. If you are an international winner of the snowboard right there that we're giving away, that Kemper Kurt Heine Apex Pro, you will have to pay the international shipping as well as the VAT on that. That is the only stipulation. Every other prize, I will be paying the shipping on. So don't worry about that. But the snowboard, you're going to have to pay the shipping. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, we got to do some more questions here. I feel like we're missing something. Who's got one here that I haven't asked yet? Okay, Ian Bodine, is there any part of current binding tech that you really feel is a game changer? I feel like binding tech hasn't advanced much over the last several years. So the materials, the materials have come such a long way. And I don't think people actually really understand that with how they're doing those 3D printed straps as well. And like the injection molded straps. So they, they got away from the cloth straps with the leather bound straps with the weird plastic in the inside. These straps, like, yeah, here it is. So straps like this from the new black level, like this shit is fucking amazing because they're actually more durable and they don't break in and actually stretch like a leather, a classic leather strap would do, which I don't have any sitting right here that are readily available to, to compare with. But this, this is actually really good. I think the other thing is figuring out how to minimize the materials in it. So you get a lighter weight binding. That's just as strong. Like they're actually putting a lot of design and engineering into these bindings to really make them work and work better for you. All right. So Ian, let's give you a spin of the wheel, bud. All right. 
right. Well, if you're new here, remember to subscribe. That's what the wheel is telling you. Definitely need more subscribers, need more likes, need more people tuning in. We want to grow this fucker out as big as we can in the snowboard media. Also, for anyone that's wondering why we did a whole day of live streams, this is our way of just giving back to snowboarding. It's given us, like Kevin and I over here, he was supposed to be here. Unfortunately, he got called back to work with like 24 hours of notice. Um, but it's our way of giving back to snowboarding. Plus, the douche canoe that's the assistant manager at the Domino's in fucking Dillon, Colorado, besides being a racist decided to say that I make money unethically from snowboarding. Well, you know what, motherfucker? I give a lot back to snowboarding, but now I'm going to show everyone how much I give back. Over 80 prizes today. So fuck you, Jacob, the assistant manager at the Domino's in Dillon. I hope you get fucking testicular cancer and die. So, all right. Anyways, uh, okay, let's get into some more questions here. Okay, uh, who hasn't had a question asked yet? Okay, Tyler Zach, where do progressive side kits fit into snowboarding? I see it on a lot of directional boards, e.g. most Jones boards, but the more I look, I see freestyle focus boards with it as well. As I've already said, like, people get so hung up on this fucking side cut bullshit, and it really is, like, the most stupid fucking thing. It's like getting hung up on your miles per gallon in your car between two cars when it's, like, they get, like, point one difference between the two. It's... It really doesn't fucking matter. Like, does the board turn? Yes, that's all you want to know. Like, does it turn? So many people are like, oh, no, it's got to have the quadralizer, oxymoron, foxalized, pistolized bullshit fucking thing to do it. And it really doesn't do anything. Like, progressive side kits, they're nice. I mean, it's better than a, just a regular radius side cut because a progressive side cut, it's going to progressively just give you a little bit more edge hold. But it's not something to hang up on. So, you know, you don't really have to like feel that out, Tyler. Like that's one of those things that you just, you look at and you go, Oh, okay. It's, it's going to grip maybe a little bit better, but what's the camber profile? What's the flex pattern? And you kind of work with that. So hopefully that answers your question, Tyler. I know you've been asking that for a few streams. I've been just kind of jumping around. It wasn't one I really wanted to hit on just yet, but I'm going to give you a spin right now. <laughs> Small sticker pack for you there, bud. All right. So get some stickers. Fuck, everyone's going to get stickers after this, dude. You guys are going to be walking billboards for it. It's going to be amazing. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, okay, Casey Lasord. Hey, Avron, have you heard anything from Smoke and Jay lately? Also, is the Quattro Grip in pop gnarly any good i want to support smoking because they're local to me um i saw jay posted something on the gram today about recycled materials and he was in a photo so i assume they're still alive um right now dude he fucked so many people last year with not shipping their boards or not shipping on time and i want to support i like jay don't get me wrong as a person i like jay but as a businessman he fucking sucks and if he sees this, I hope he fucking hears it. Uh, I can't support him. I can't tell people go buy his product because I don't know if he's going to fucking ship it. It's, it's, I would like to believe that he could because he does make some really good fucking boards. Uh, Quattro Grip is, it's a decent side cut, but once again, marketing spiel and stuff, it works. That's it. Pop Gnarly, their boards are poppy. Like, you know, but you're also dealing with a North American made board. They use more epoxy in there. They tend to decamber a little bit faster than a European or a Chinese made board. It's just kind of the nature of the beast and how they do the wet layup in there and stuff. I mean, but to go back to it, you know, I like Jay. I, I think he's a good guy. I've never really had anything bad to say about him. He's always treated me right, but I just see people ordering product and they can't get it. I can't fucking endorse that. Like, I see that and I'm just like, that's a big fuck you to snowboarding and a big fuck you to your customer. And it's bullshit. Like just be a good fucking business person. Like, dude, I've had to eat it a few times because I fucked up some stuff and uh, I fucked up a, an order. Like, so just so everyone knows we're doing mystery boxes for sale on angry store.com in the past. I did a mystery box and uh, one of the guys ordered it in Australia. I sent him the wrong size stuff. I, I ended up just ordering him all new stuff completely sent it to him, let him keep the other stuff because it was cheaper than paying the shipping and getting it back and 
having him deal with that headache and just told him to give it to someone. It was just a thing. That's, that's, that's what you do sometimes as a small business owner. You just fucking, you got to do this to do, be right by the people. And right now smoking's dropping the fucking ball. Like every year I reach out for him to get stuff. I haven't gotten on any of their stuff in like three years. And it's like, Oh yeah, we're going to do it. And I mean, I ran into one of his reps and he even told me, he's like, dude, he couldn't produce on time. He couldn't do this shit. So as much as I really want to support smoking and I know they're in your backyard and you want to support them, unless you can physically pick the fucking board up in person from him, I'd be really questionable about if you're going to see that or not. So just, it's a buyer beware type of situation. All right. So Casey, let's give you a spin. All right, Casey, you got a small sticker pack there, bud. Okay, man. Let's see. So we got 112 people in here. Let's see. Who hasn't had a question answered? Okay. Uh, let's see. I feel like I'm missing something. Okay. Let 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 Lechold seven two four. What do you think of the side cuts on GNU boards? Do they really help icy East Coast conditions? By the way, good on you for helping Will X out. You, yeah. So just so everyone that doesn't know, Casey got robbed, lost like all his camera equipment and shit. Uh, I've known Casey for probably ten years now. Like we go back way before the YouTube thing. Like he's just a good dude. I mean, I used to do Thanksgiving dinners and Christmas dinners and shit with him when he was in town. Um, yeah, he got robbed. So I just hit him up and I was like, yo, I'll send you a GoPro. What do you need? Ordered him a GoPro seven, which is like what he absolutely loves. Got him that got it to him. I think like three days after he got robbed. So he could get back and making content. Cause I just love seeing him being able to do his thing. So there was that, uh, as far as the side cut on GNU boards, you're talking about magnet traction. So magnet traction actually does work. You have an added contact point. They finally figured it out after a few years on how to make it better. But the big thing is you've got these added contact points, and it's like a serrated steak knife. So if you've ever used a serrated steak knife to cut steak, you know, like, when it's really charred and fucking burnt. Like, if you try to cut a steak with a butter knife, it's not going to work. But a serrated knife, it's going to cut right into it. And that's the exact same concept. It does work. Is it going to turn ice into powder like their marketing says? No, it's not. It's, it's going to reach around, give you an old rub and tug, whisper in your ear, it's okay, just go with it, and you'll be fine. So that's the best way to do that, to word that one. Let's give you a spin of the wheel, buddy. Ooh, middle finger. Oh, coming up short on that. Not getting something. So close to getting that prize, though. Okay. Uh... Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> Riley Tong. Having more than one snowboard, do you really need more than one? I mean, realistically, if you buy an all-mountain freestyle board, it'll it'll do everything okay. It's like having a claw hammer. It'll fucking do things. But sometimes you need a ball-peen hammer, and sometimes you need a fucking mallet, and sometimes you need a sledgehammer to get the job done. Would a claw hammer work? Yeah, but you're going to work twice as hard for it. That's really the big thing. That's why I've been doing those top five two-board lists. I feel like two boards really gets it done. Like If, if you can kind of just cover the spectrum in that, the older I get, the more I'm like, I find that my riding style has changed and I need a park board, but my park board is not going to be a great pow board. And so I have a pow board and then my pow board isn't necessarily going to be a good groomer day board. So I've got a board for like carving groomers and shit. And then I'm, you know, I've got stuff that's in between the beauty of what I do. I get to ride everything out there and really test it out so I can give you guys reviews so you can do it. But I think realistically two boards is about the max that most people need. And then 
Like you get these people that are like, I got like 45 snowboards. Why the fuck do you have 45 snowboards? Like in this room, I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I got about 30 snowboards in this room. And then there's probably another 30 in the other room and shit. Some of them are from companies I'm testing, doing stuff, but like personal boards that I own, I own about five. That's, that's about it. And some of them are getting retired because I've just hit too many rocks with them and stuff. But you know, this one board, if you get a good, well-balanced board that can do everything, then yeah, you're probably going to be fine. You won't master anything and it'll work. But I mean, it's a four foot pow day. Do you want to be riding your 152 jib stick? Not really. So that's kind of that scenario. All right, Riley, let's give you a spin. <laughs> Ooh, prize. All right. What do we got here? What do we got? Digging in the box. Feels squishy. Probably a frog. Dead frog. Okay. All right. Where is it on the list here? Do, 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 see nick p after never summer and gilson what mainstream brand do you think doesn't belong in snowboarding Ooh, that's a great question that is a really good question although i wouldn't consider gilson mainstream by any means but you want to know i'll tell you right now i'm working on a video about it but no bad day like fuck that brand just fuck them awful their shit is fucking straight garbage the boards every time i see one of their boards in the wild it's fucking twisted which means they pulled it out of the press while it was still hot and it bent so when you put it flat you have one contact point on the heel edge and one on the toe touching them the other one so it's like teetering and tattering it's like going to your favorite restaurant sitting on the patio but you get the fucking lopsided table that you need to shove napkins under that's the only way but you can't do that with a snowboard it's like their shit's garbage. And my favorite was when they bought those knockoff imitation fucking union bindings and then tried to sell them and say, well, they're made in the same factory as union. So they're, they're like a union. They're not a fucking union. It's, it's a reverse engineered pile of shit, but you're trying to sell it to people like that brand, their outerwear is straight single stitch garbage. Like almost every person I know that bought something, it blew out in some way. So like, fuck that brand. Like, Fucking, I'm working on a video eventually if I ever get around to it. I, I have all these ideas that I never get around to. Funding mainly. Um, so yeah, there's that. All right, Nick, let's give you a spin. What do we got? What do we got? Where are we at? What do we got? Oh, prize for Nick. Okay. What do we got? Mm, squishy. Baby gerbil fetus, I think. I think. I don't know. All right. Anyways, Nick, you just won. You just won that. So there you go. All right. And let's see. We've got 106 people in here. Okay. Greg Bodfish. Good board and binding combo for a beginner. About 140 pounds in Midwest riding. So... There's a couple great boards that I would put people on, uh, especially because they can progress with it. But for boards, I would look at the K2 Ray Gun. If you want them to have a little more snap, you could do the Ray Gun Pop, but I think the regular Ray Gun will be fine. Ride Wildlife, Nidecker Merc. Um, let's see, I'm brain farting here. Oh, you could do an Arbor Draft as well. You could do a Formula if you really want to, but I think the Draft would be fine. In there, so there's four. Uh, I'm gonna throw a fifth one on there the Rome Warden. I ride it, it's meat and potatoes board, but it's actually not that bad. Now, in terms of binding, you want to get a decent binding that they can just take with them from any board. So, let's uh, I'd go with like a Burton Malavita Union Force. You could do a K2 Indy if you're on a price point, that's actually a really decent binding. Uh, Rome, I do the DOD, maybe the 390 boss, but probably the DOD would be a little bit better. And I'm going to throw the fixed truce on there as well. All right, Greg, let's give me a spin. Okay, pulling a prize. What do we got here? 
deflated basketball. That's definitely what that is. So, And hopefully every one of you guys tuning into this has just been enjoying today. Hopefully getting your questions answered. You're just enjoying the wheel. You're, it's our way of giving back to snowboarding. Decided the next time we do something like this, we're getting a Plinko board. And we're going to do Plinko with you guys. It's going to be fucking great. Can't wait to build that. So, yeah. All right. Uh... Uh, uh. Okay, letters more. Thoughts on the crazy rubbery top coat on Never Summer Boards. Demoed one this year, and the grip coming off the lift was weird coming from traditional top sheet. So what you're talking about is their carbonium top sheet. It's a rental board top sheet. It's rental board material. That's any other company, like Rosnall, that's, it, they put that on their rental boards. Like Atomic, Burton, all of them, it's rental board top sheet material. That's really what it is. Like... They somehow convinced people to pay $50 more for a rental board top sheet that's heavier. That's it. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's more durable, but it also looks like shit. It, it's, it's, yeah, so. Okay, let's see what we got here for a second. Right. All right, small sticker pack for you, bud. So, yeah. Okay, Leticia Castello Branco. New advancing beginner girl rider here. Have you gotten any women's boards to review recommend this year? Didn't get any women's boards to review, just mainly because I don't have someone that I trust to be a women's reviewer right now. Had a few people reach out. They're just not the qualifications. Definitely want to expand into that. Have wanted to expand into that for years. But if you're a women's beginner, you're just starting out, I would look at like the K2 Bright Light. Uh, let's see. If you want something that's a little more advanced, but you can progress with, uh, we actually just gave this away, but yeah, uh, Arbor Cadence Rocker, totally good board to learn on. Arbor, uh, Burton, you could probably do like the Feather if you really wanted to, and then there's one other one that's kind of like slightly above it, and I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, Marhar, you might like the Jewel from them. Gnu, I would probably go with like the Velvet. So you got a few options for you. Congratulations on being a women's snowboarder and just starting out, like hopefully you able to progress. All right, Leticia, let's give you a spin. Oh, small sticker pack for you. All right, there you go. Okay, and who's got what? Uh. Philip Chesnack, why is landing bigger jumps so tough? Can't seem to get stable after. Probably because you're dropping out of the sky with a ton of speed and you're not used to like you're going to have that weightless feeling and then you're going to set it down and you're going to come out like bigger jumps tend to have a steeper landing on it too. So you're just not used to what's going on. Obviously you want a steeper landing cause you're coming down further. If you have a flatter landing, that's going to fucking hurt like hell, but you're coming down to it. So it's a whole mental game of understanding that when you land, it's basically like if you ran and jumped on a slip and slide, that's covered in dish soap and it's going downhill it's the turbo speed effect, and that's what's going on. So it's a mental game. So you got to just build yourself up a lot more straight airing to get yourself used to it. Then you can start spinning. But once you build up that confidence, you get used to being like, oh, okay, that's how I'm going to land. That's that's going to do it. And if you're really worried about it, try to make sure that you land a little tail heavy and roll forward. So your tail's going to hit, and you're going to roll forward. That's that's it. It's just putting the landing gear down. All right, Phil. Let's do this. <laughs> Another small sticker. Damn, this thing's hitting today. All right. and who's got what going on over there? Uh, 
Okay, Trevor Sunder, what's a good pow charger board that would make a two a good two board quiver with my signal disruptor 156 wide? So you want something that you can really charge pow on? If you want stiff and you want to be able to charge, I would go with the Jones Ultra Mind Expander. It's camber dominant, it's stiff, it's aggressive. You might also like the Yes Optimistic. It's a little more volume shifted, but it is stiffer. You can charge with it. If not, maybe a pick your line or um, a standard from Yes. If you're going to look at someone else, uh, trying to think what's out there, maybe like a Telos DST would work for you. Um, with Ride, you could go with like a Berserker, maybe the Mountain Pig or even a Super Pig. Super Pig will be a little more playful. So you got, you got some options with what I just recommended there. Check them out. All right, Trevor. Oh, loser. You were so close. So close. Okay. Will Doyle, would going from a Rome Warden to a Yes Jackpot be a good progression for someone who is learning park? Yes. I think that's a good step up. Like, you started on the Warden. You're going to go to the jackpot, which the new one has camber. The 2020 was camber rocker, predominantly camber. I think that's a good logical progression for you right there. So definitely do it, especially if you're looking to get into park. Now let's give me a spin. Whoa. All right. We got a prize for Will Doyle here. Hmm. Feels stringy. Might be horse meat. Not sure. Got to watch out. Went to the slaughterhouse before when I was coming up with the prizes for you guys. Okay. I uh, feel like we're missing a few. Um, oh, my man, Jesse Dennis. What's up, nerd? Sitting here with Drunk Thunder, Torque Wrench, Jones, and the Pope. Give the lady a spin. My man, Jesse Dennis, with the giant cankle. <laughs> Oh, loser. So close. Almost want to snowboard there, buddy. Okay. Uh, who else we got going on here? Okay. S2000 guy. I love my 2019 party platter pre-revamp. Should I go out of my way to get on the new version? Does the flat base of the 2019 make it more friendly for someone who isn't super skilled as myself? You're fine. You don't. I mean, if you want a demo, I've ridden with you, so I know this. But if you want to ride the 2020 or the newer one with camber, go for it. It's going to be a little more precise. You're going to have to be a little more on your A game with it. You can be a little more loose and playful with one you have. I'd say just stick with what you got. Just go ride more. Save your money. You'll be good. You stay safe out there in the streets. Oh, lose a turn. Okay, let's see. Michael Andy, the goof ride, I assume you mean the good ride, which I love it, the goof ride, has the words that boarding companies hang next to their lineup. Would you consider that, given most people in the know consider you more reputable? Uh, we actually tried it one time. I don't like it. It doesn't fucking matter. That's why top fives exist. And the whole reason the top fives is then, like, you got five boards in the category, and you can kind of be like, oh, well, this is, like, number one, but this is still, like, a number four pick, and this is a three pick, and whatever like that. Those, are, those awards don't mean shit. I mean, the good ride, those guys probably got a fucking hand job from a rep and got to keep a free product, and that's why they did it. Like, fuck those guys. Like, they suck dicks with their butthole. Ugh. If you're new here, remember to subscribe. All right. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh. Spencer Stiglitz, would TBT help or hinder carving progression? Asking for my wife. Also, any thoughts of adding a female perspective to your reviews? Yes, we've thought plenty of times about adding women to it. Uh, I know what I'm ideally looking for. If the Rona hadn't like taken over the whole world, we would have made enough money to actually be able to hire a female reviewer like year-round. 
Um, fortunately, we're taking a huge financial hit this year and like a bunch of stuff that we had planned for the fall just isn't going to happen. Fuck it. I've been in worse situations. We'll survive. But yeah, down the road, we're working towards that. Now, in terms of TBT helping or hindering free yard carving, I think for a lot of people, if you don't understand that you're losing that grip at the contact point because they're elevated, and so you're actually moving it more towards the insert pack, it hinders them because they're trying to drive a cambered snowboard out at the tips, but there's no grip. It's elevated. And so you're actually steering more off the effective edge closer to the inserts. It does that. With that said, though, one of the best carving boards that I've ever ridden was the Battalion Carver. It just, it engaged perfectly when it was on edge, it locked in, it drove off the tail. It was the perfect, what I call beer league border cross board. It, it, and that's what it is. And I think the other thing is taking into consideration what level of 3BT it has, because they have, what, like eight different versions of it, and that really does affect how it rides. Sorry, starting to lose my voice. Got to keep got to keep it going here. Um, but yeah, so it, 3BT can affect that in there. I think it all comes down to the person's comfortability and what they know, but and it changes how you ride. Like, I'm not a super huge fan of 3BT. Like, I want to like it. But some of the boards I get on, I'm just like, oh, God, this is fucking squirrely as shit. And sometimes I get on, it's like, ah, oh, this is actually really fun. So hopefully that answers that question. All right, Spencer. Spin. Oh, middle finger. Lose. Okay. Uh... Uh, where was it? All right. Shout out to my man, Carlos Enriquez, who helped donate some of these prizes for the earlier live streams. He's like, what's your advice for anyone learning to repair core shots from an iconic day chasing pow in the deep woods? Make sure that you clean out the area that's impacted. You know, you get any debris that's sticking in there. You get that out. Then you want to cut the sides so that they're angled just so that the weld will actually stick with it. Sometimes you can cut like a little groove in there to just kind of get it to stick. You can always epoxy the core if that's really showing. Do that, then put it on there. If you're like me and you just want to do a cheap, quick fix, fucking grab a pop bottle, a Gatorade bottle, whatever, light that fucker on fire, even a plastic Ziploc bag, twist it up, light it on fire and drip that thing in there until it fills everything in there. And you just take a razor blade and flatten it right out and you get on your way. That's like the most ghetto, cheap, quick fix I can tell you about. <laughs> All right, you win a prize if you want it. Last time you told me to put it back in, so I'm going to go with we're probably just going to keep it back in there for you, Carlos. Uh, you can always hit me up, and uh, I'll have extra stuff. I can send you something. All right. Uh... Okay, this comes from Osvaldo. What board would you say is better, the Jones flagship or the Ride Super Pig? I ride everything, very little part. Uh, if you're riding everything with very little park, I'd probably go with the flagship over the Super Pig. Super Pig gets a little more freestyle focused at times if you really need it to. Um, both great boards, but you also have to ask yourself, do you want volume shifted? If you do, then you go with the Super Pig. If you don't, then you'd go with the flagship as well. <laughs> I think that might be part of Randy's mullet. <sighs> okay, well, put that one off in the corner and got some more questions coming in here. Right. Shout out once again to Kemper Snowboards. They are in the chat for donating to the prizes today. This is the Kemper Apex Kurt Heine Pro Model. It's a volume shifted. Fun little zippy resort cruiser, carver, pow board, party board. It's super fun. So, yeah. Uh, okay.
Jorge Morales, what's your opinion of boutique snowboard brands like Amplit, Karua, Cardiff, cool shapes with fun rides or overpriced boards that your average rider won't get the most out of? Um, no, I shouldn't say that. Like, I wouldn't say that the average rider won't get the most out of. I see a lot of average riders that own like tranny finders and stuff from Karua, and they look like they're crushing it. Amplit actually makes phenomenal fucking snowboards with some crazy tech. Uh, Cardiff is coming out of GP87. I would like to ride some of their stuff at some point, maybe. We'll see. Bjorn Linus is kind of doubling down with Nicholas Mueller on the conspiracy crazy bullshit, and I don't really support that. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to kind of see how he plays that out. Um, but, you know, they do make some amazing-looking shapes. I know the guys that have helped engineer some of that stuff and whatnot, and they look like they'd ride good. Uh, I get that the higher price tag – it works with the model that they have and how they sell things. And it's putting the money back in the rider's hands. So it does kind of make some sense there to me. Plus I think snowboards really haven't gone up in price crazy over the last few years. Like we're starting to see it, but it isn't where it theoretically should be. I mean, eventually we're going to price ourselves out. Um, but for the average rider, I mean, if you go like five, 10 times a year, it might be too much board for it. But if you go like 30, 35 days a year, I think it totally work for you. All right. Hey. Ooh, loser so close to winning that snowboard. Uh, okay. Marcio Santos, what's the best icon resort in Colorado? Uh, personally, my favorite is Copper on there but there are you get a lot of great resorts with the icon you got all the aspen resorts if you don't get the base pass uh otherwise you got copper steamboat eldora winter park sucks ass fuck that place um but yeah i'd say copper is probably the best steamboat's really really good too as well um, so yeah let's give me a spin <laughs> Price. All right, what do we got here? So this is a big one. That might be a hoodie. Might be a dead baby. I don't know. It's kind of heavy. All right, and let's see. Okay, we got a good one in here from Jesse Dennis. I'm a gender neutral, ambidextrous, diabetic, bi curious, unitarian. I weigh 800 pounds, have a goiter named Steve, and silky smooth platinum blonde hair. What's the best Burton for lawn maintenance? Well, you want Jack Burton, of course. I mean, Jack Burton Express. Come on. He beat Raiden. That's who I'd hire. <laughs> My man, Jesse, getting the sticker pack, which actually I've already put it together for you. So it's in there. All right. We got one from Sean Sheeling. Aftermarket insults make my ankles hurt. Any other method to prevent heel lift? Was looking at the Burton Photon. It has the bow go around the heel. Wonder if that helps. So anything with an internal boa will definitely keep you locked down. Uh, I think the K2 boa conda technology that they actually use is great because you've got the adjustability. You can It's on a Velcro hoop, so you can move it up or down if you need to. In there, uh, the reason your ankles are hurting from the insoles is you have developed muscle memory that isn't actually appropriate. So what they're doing is they're compensating in there, and you're probably actually pronating or supinating a little bit. Also, uh, with heel lift, you might actually be in a boot that's a little bit too big for you, which would also explain why you're having heel lift issues. The good news is we have the boot fitting 101 series. If you have not checked that out, strongly recommend it. Even better news in August, I'm redoing a bunch of those videos to update them and I'm doing the boot fitting 201 series. So there will be a ton of boot fitting information coming out for all the snowboarders of the internet out there to hopefully learn how to get a more properly fit snowboard. All right. <laughs> Remember to subscribe, people. Remember to subscribe. That way you're not missing 
anything out there that we got coming out. So let's see. Okay. Oh, am I missing someone here? Evan Widger, do you own any snowboards made in Alaska? No, because the only ones that I know that are made in Alaska are built like shit. And they're not even built in Alaska. They're actually made in California. Or no, they wait, they moved to St. George, Utah. It was made at the Munson factory, but they were shit. So unless there's some like new manufacturer out there that I've never heard of making it, like most of the stuff I've seen that's made in Alaska isn't actually made in Alaska. It's designed in Alaska, and I use that term loosely. Because it's just a guy looking at the catalog from the factory going, yeah, that shape, mm -hmm, that, here's my graphic, slap it on. And that's kind of it. So, yeah. Uh, all right, let's give you a spin. <laughs> Ooh, there you go, Evan. You want a medium sticker pack. So there you go. Uh, okay. Kevin Ma, have you heard of Fixed Binding Company? Yes, I have. I know Jason, the owner, very well. I was actually supposed to get some stuff right before quarantine happened. Fortunately, it didn't happen. Um, how do they compare to Rome, Union, Burton, Now, etc.? Uh, so, is it, is it the Wilson? No, it's the Magnum. It's the Magnum or the Wilson? I think it's the Magnum. Would be close to closer to, like, the Force. Uh, the ones with the unibody construction would be closer to like a Burton or a Flux in terms of that. Um, bindings are really solid, actually. The only gripe that I have about them is how wide the footprint is on the base tray. Uh, there's a really big dead spot with them. They've been working on it the last few years. So I haven't been on a set in probably two years. And I know that they've kind of revamped some stuff going in for 2021. So I'd like to get back on them and see if they shrink that down. But the way they build their bindings is very modular. Like they have a factory that makes ladder straps, a factory that makes buckles, a factory that does high backs, and then they assemble them. So that way it's not like any one factory is really kind of like doing anything, or at least that's how they used to be. Maybe they've changed. But their buckles were always solid. Uh, they held well. Like when I did, I rode the truce. I rode, um, I rode like three or four of them, and Kevin rode a few too. We did some written reviews. I don't think we ever did video reviews of them, so they're not on YouTube. But the written reviews are on angrysnowboarder.com. And, you know, you can go back, check that stuff out, and they're pretty solid. All right, Kevin, let's get this. Ooh, middle finger, that's rough. Okay. Uh... Okay. Mike Chung, what would you say affects how a snowboard rides the most? Use of carbon, core profiling, different wood cores. I think all three of those in some regard affect what we know about snowboards and how they actually work. Uh, the big thing is if you profile and mill the core so the carbon sits in it and then you also use like say bamboo or polonia in there, that you're like using all three methods of what you're talking about. That drastically changes everything in there. Um, crap, where is the one? Yeah, right here. So we'll do this. So like this roam here, when the light catches it right, you can see it. So they got that rod in there and that actually is milled back to the core through to the insert pack right there, but then it actually shows up there. And that actually changes the effect of how those board will actually snap in there. And then, um, the other thing is like, you can tell the difference between like a poplar, a beech, a maple, uh, well, not really maple. They don't really use maple too much in course, but you spruce, you, you know, when they start playing around with different woods, you can see it. Um, there's, there's two types of flexes too with a snowboard. There's what we call organic flex and inorganic flex. Organic flex is like when something's built with bamboo to replace carbon. 
it, it has more of a sluggish response to the rebound where carbon, when you push into it, it pops right back out as well. So they all do in some regard affect how a snowboard rides. And it overall, like that core profiling is one of the biggest things in there, especially with materials and how they implement everything that does affect it. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, Mike. Let's get Ooh, not a prize. Used to be a prize, but it's not a prize anymore. Okay. Uh... Steve Price. Does Signal snowboard structure or stone grind their boards before they leave the factory? I got – what the fuck was that one that we – the wow. Uh, Kevin and I got the wow, and there was a deep structure in that. So it definitely was stone ground, um, and it definitely had structure to it. Um, I think some of the boards probably aren't. Like the park boards probably don't have any structure to them. Uh, I don't really know. I haven't seen one in a couple of years. But uh, I know, like, the WOW, the free ride, I think the Yup when I got it, had it in there. So, yeah. Uh, all right, Steve, let's give you a spin. Ooh, middle finger. Ouch. Okay. Ben Gartland, Capita DOA, GNU Finest, or Ride Twin Pig for a park board? Okay, so you're kind of all over the spectrum there. I mean, the, the Twin Pig and the DOA are kind of in the same category, but you got asymmetrical versus a non-asymmetrical. So let's go over this. So in terms of st uh, stiffest to softest, it's going to be Twin Pig, DOA, Finest. All right, so that means that the Finest is going to be more jibby, more buttery, and then the DOA would be in the middle, then the Twin pig would be the stiffest. Now, the twin pig, you can downsize on it. It's a medium volume shifted board. So you can kind of compensate for how it rides by downsizing in it. Out of the three, my personal favorite of those would be the DOA, then the finest. Personally, I don't like the twin pig. I just find it to be a fucking turd of a board. Like, it, it's okay. It does snowboard things. But, like, would I fucking be like, oh, there's a twin pig. Ah, I'm going to go jerk all over it and take it for a spin. No, I, I'd probably, like, roll up and be like, Twin pig ride kink. I grab the ride kink every fucking time because I just think it's a better board. So, uh, yeah. So hopefully that answers that question for you, Ben. Let's give you a spin. Remember to subscribe. Remember to subscribe, people. Okay. All right, David B., what are your thoughts on Wired Snowboards? Love all the custom graphics they are doing. Any favorites in their line? Uh, I really like the Directive, and I like the Vantage. From The Directive is one of the most unique all-mountain freestyle boards that I've ridden. It has such a unique flex pattern with the way the camber profile is on that. So how it locks into presses and everything is drastically different. And it's so unique to it. But the Vantage, like you get in that thing, and you're just like, holy shit. You can send it when you need to, but be laid back if you want to on it. That, in my opinion, is actually probably their best board in their lineup is the Vantage. Uh, it's personally like one of my free ride-ish board favorites from them. I really like what Rob Dow is doing over there, and I like the fact that you can get a custom graphic on there, and it's actually on a good board. It's not like some of these factories, because there are companies out there that are like, we do custom boards, and I was like, you can't even make your own snowboards for your brand right, so fuck you. So, like, if you're going to do a custom, I'd say definitely go with Wired or Marhar. Those are two that get it right. Some of these other fly-by-night factories are fucking shit stains on snowboarding. So, fuck them. Uh, all right. Give me. Let's give me this. Uh, ooh, back to remember to subscribe. If you're new here, remember to subscribe. Uh, okay. All right. Uh. All right. Mass Mills, I'm looking for a beginner slope style board. Oh, what do you recommend? Something that's easy flexing and camber dominant. So I'd look at like Rome Agent, 
the new yes jackpot for 2021 you could even do the 2020 yes jackpot but the 2021 that's what i'd recommend uh you might uh, the burnout would probably be a little too much for you um so we're gonna skip on that uh the arbor relapse uh let's see yeah that's not that good um you could do a capita outsiders as well that would be solid or a capita indoor survival so there's about five options for you nas all right let's give you a spin <laughs> Oh shit, dude, you just want a fucking snowboard. Sweet, dude. So you just won that Kemper Apex 152. So you need to take a screenshot of your question. Prove to me to, by taking a screenshot of your account. Email it to info at angry snowboarder. Write mega prize winner in the subject line. And if you are live in the United States, I will be paying the shipping for you. If you are an international you got to pay the shipping and the VAT on it, unfortunately. But yeah, email info at angrysnowboarder.com and we'll get that to you. So fuck yeah, we still got a few more prizes we got to give away. We're going to be here for about, oh, I don't know, seven more minutes and then we're going to do the wind down. So let's uh, take a few more questions. All right. All right, let's see. Uh... Healthy snowboarder, Averin, if you don't get any summer riding in, what are you going to do to stay in shape for A-Base and opening in October? Dude, the gym reopened. I've been fucking pumping iron six days a week. You see how thick this neck is getting? Dude, dude, I've already gained 10 pounds since the gym reopened, and I'm already up two weight sets. I'm jocking out over there just fucking heaving weight, dude. I'm fucking ripped. Dude, which is going to be great. Because that little motherfucker Jacob that works at the Dylan fucking Domino's that wanted to be a little racist shit and tell me and go off on me about a bunch of shit, which I need to read his messages in a podcast because Kevin got some too. It's fucking hilarious. I'm going to throat punch that little motherfucker and it's going to make him shit himself and it's going to be the greatest thing on earth. Can't wait. I'd film it, but that's video evidence and you don't want that in this day and age. <laughs> Small sticker pack for you there, bud. You know what's up. Okay. Oh, God. Jesse Dennis, favorite snowboard of 2005. I don't think I was riding anything current in 2005. Actually, no, I take that back. Atomic Hatchet. I was riding an Atomic Hatchet. All right, Jesse, spin the wheel, because I'm going to fuck. Lose a turn. Oh, that sucks. Okay. AJ Abbott, I'm thinking about the battalion disaster for my first camber board. Thoughts? I like the disaster, actually, from battalion. That was actually a really fun board. The big question you got to ask yourself is, do you want 3BT? It's going to be a little looser out in the tip of the tail. You're not going to get like what a true camber board is without 3D shaping advantage. So you're not going to get that drive into the tip and the tail. It's going to be just a little bit looser, but I really do like the disaster. I rode the 2021. I'm going to have a review of that coming out. It was a super fun board. All right. Let's give you a spin. Woo, prize. All right. What do we got here? We're digging around. Giant circle. I think, I think this might be, yeah, yeah, this is what I just thought it was. Aha! So this, it's a prophylactic. All right, AJ Abbott, you win that. Throw that over there in the cam pile. All right. All right. Bryson Hubert, what defunct brand would you like to see return? I want Atomic to return. Everyone's like, oh, bring back Forum. And I was like, no, let's bring back Atomic. Why? Price point park boards, $269.99 for a throwaway fucking park board that did not suck. And even when the prices jumped up and it went to $329, you were still getting a great bang for the buck. 
The atomic boards were fucking fire. If you knew, you knew. If you didn't, well, you fucking missed out. Woo, small sticker for you, Bryson. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. S2000 guy, who coined the name Angry Snowboarder? Well, that was me. Was it self-titled, or did you spray an entire skier family, and the dad said, stay away from that one, son. He's an angry snowboarder. No. I uh, actually came up with it thanks to the courtesy of James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. At the time, I was watching all of his videos. I discovered him on some weird streaming torrent website bullshit. I watched, like, 50 episodes of it and thought it was, like, the most funny thing. Now he's not really that funny anymore. He's kind of gotten sad and depressing poor james rolf made a movie though that many people can say you got to fucking do that but yeah so uh that's that's kind of where that came from and i was like well we need an angry snowboarder and i'm just gonna be it so yeah <laughs> So I'm going to take probably one more question after this, and then we're going to do the wind down here. And I'm just digging through everything and seeing if there's anyone I missed, which I know I missed a lot of questions on there. And I'll get back down here to the bottom and see what's up. Up Freak X. End on a spin. Thanks for the giveaways. Sure, why not? We'll give you a spin and then I'll take a question. Ooh, what do we got here? Let's dig around. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a cutting board. Okay. Yeah, you just want a cutting board. So, yeah, all right. Final question. Uh... Johnny Crook. All right, this will be the final question. Could you pair a board with zero dampening with a pair of damp bindings and have a damp overall ride? It, your feet are still going to take the fucking hammering in there, so you need to get a good footbed that's got good posting on it to really dampen it out. You're still going to end up feeling a bunch of shit like coming up through there. All that liveliness, anything from the tip and the tail resonating back to the insert pack. I mean, it'll do a little bit of a job. You're still going to end up feeling it in to some extent. And I've seen people like try to do setups like this at demo days where they're like the liveliest board with like the most stable damp binding. And they're like, I still felt everything with it. And I'm like, and I've done stuff like that. And so there is that. All right, Johnny, final spin of the wheel. Remember to click like, everybody. Like and subscribe. All right. All right. So anyways, guys, we're going to finish this up because my blood sugar is fucking low and all I've eaten today is a popsicle. So I'm kind of cranky and I want to go eat some fucking Italian food or Chinese. I'm not sure. Chinese, Italian. I don't really give a fuck. I'll eat it all. I'm that goddamn hungry. So anyways, 
Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everyone that was able to win prizes. Thanks to Kemper Snowboards for donating two prizes. Thanks you to Carlos Enriquez for helping to donate to get two of the snowboards as well. We gave away four snowboards. We gave away a set of bindings courtesy of now. Thanks to my rep, Petey Lowell, or the Plow King as he's known around here. So, yeah, that um, – I'm joking about all the dead animals inside the things. Don't worry about it. They're actual real prizes. I'm going to get those out. Make sure that if you did win – that you took a screenshot of your question, a screenshot showing that your account is linked to you. You're going to email that to info at angry snowboarder. Make sure that you put what live stream you won and what prize you did and make sure it has your e or your mailing address. I need your mailing address. Anyone that was an international winner that won a snowboard or the bindings or whatever, the mega prizes, you're going to have to pay the shipping on that. I'll reach out to you if you emailed me. We'll figure out shipping from there, get that going, but you need to pay the shipping, the VAT and stuff like that. So, yeah, but once again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'm glad we were able to do something like this. The next time we're going to do something, it's going to be a couple months. I think we're probably looking like maybe September, October, but I want to give away a season pass, uh, some more random prizes, maybe a snowboard then. Uh, we're not going to do the wheel. I think we're going to try to get a Plinko board. So we're going to play Plinko. So we're going to make it really, really interesting. I don't know exactly how we're going to do it, but we're going to try to do something like that. It's our way of giving back to snowboarding. Snowboarding's given us a lot. So don't worry about us. We'll survive. We always fucking do. Come on. Angry Snowboarders started in the fucking 2008 recession. Still fucking here. Still going. So don't worry about that. But hey, if you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not going to miss any of the videos we got coming out for you. If you really want to support us, you got the financial means to swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. Check that out. I got a video over there. If you want to buy some merchandise, there's AngrySnowboarderStore.com. We put mystery boxes up on there. Still got a bunch of those left for you. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you guys in another video.